Hi everyone, and thanks for joining us today on the Scan Pro Video podcast. We're joined by Ed Lister, lighting cameraman, and we're going to talk a little bit about um, his role, lighting, and how the industry has changed uh, over the last two years with the pandemic. Hi Ed, thanks for joining us. I uh, really appreciate your time today. No, no problem. Lovely to be here. Looks fantastic in the studio today. You've done a lot of effort there. Looks good. Thank you very much. We're doing our best um, with what we can. So if you want to give us a little bit of a background on yourself, how did you get into the industry? Tell us a little bit about what you do. That'd be great. Sure, yeah. Um, I've worked in broadcast for over 10 years now. Started out a long, long time ago in Manchester, just assisting on various little piece, bits and pieces, um, kind of learning on the trade as I went rather than going the traditional route of sort of running. I just kind of got involved with as many people as I could, bought basic kit and kind of built up, um, got involved with various bits and pieces. And then, yeah, now I, I, I'm a lighting camera by, by trade, sort of shoot, produce various bits and pieces. And uh, yeah, here we are, built built a little circle of network in Manchester where, where I'm based. And yeah, it's, it's good, kind of love it. Uh, it definitely seems to be going well. We were talking um, just before we started this, and you're you're a busy man by by all accounts. So you're definitely doing something right. I also believe it's a bit, bit busy time at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, you know, it keeps you out of trouble. Um, but I also believe you're you're a bit of an audio fail. Um, am I right that you also write for Resolution Magazine? Yes. So going back a good few years now. Um, the when the DSLR world was sort of just coming into its its own, um, I got involved with Resolution Magazine just to to give some talks. At, I don't know if you remember. Do you remember BVE, the the broadcast expo yeah, in London? Do. BVE um, North and South, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I've not been to BVE in a long time, but yeah, I used to give talks for Resolution there about on how would be how would you actually go to capture audio for using DSLRs because a lot of people in that sort of um, you know, we were quite new to it, didn't really know how you'd get, because obviously there's very little audio inputs on the first DSLRs that came out, a whole new world to a lot of self-shooters then. So I kind of got involved with Resolution then to give um, practical demos and talks on how, how you would do that. And then since then, I've kind of stayed in with Resolution Magazine and I give like more tech tips and, and that sort of stuff from the camera side of things um, on how, you know, what, what sort of mic you might be using for certain scenarios, that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, I do a lot of audio on on shoots anyway with by myself. So you kind of, kind of I've kind of learned that way really, um, and then just apply it to to whatever really. But yeah, they're a good magazine resolution, good guys. They do some very nerdy yeah, I mean, stuff, but they're good. The 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 whole learn by doing thing, uh, I, I can't recommend enough. You know, if there's you know if there's the chance to go out and learn something on a shoot, I'd always recommend people take it. Um, you know, you're only ever going to yeah. learn by making mistakes so go out make them learn from them um and, and i totally agree with with what you were saying you know um audio seems to almost fall by the wayside almost like a forgotten art um especially with people who might be starting out or getting into sort of um videography or filming particularly the dslr market um and something else i, th I think sort of not falls by the wayside but it's a bit of a forgotten art um is definitely lighting um that that trying to impress on people you know you can have the highest resolution camera you want you know it can have this massive iso range but you still need lights um yeah massive. And i think especially like we say with the iso range um you know a lot of the mirrorless cameras and smaller sony alphas you know you can crack it way 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 up without seeing any sort of noise flaws and and uh, uh you know it's kind of expected now that you might not need to light something you can just do it in the moonlight or whatever outside and it's you know there's a there's a, a line to that and it's, it's not, not becoming lazy but it's like you still kind of need to know how to light things and you know it's it kind of be a, uh, overlooked and forgotten like you say um it's you know a big part of the job totally totally um Everyone, yeah, you know, I hear it's a question I hear a lot. People looking for that film look or, or that cinema <laughs> look. You're never going to get it if you're just taking your camera outside and hoping for the best. You know, um, 
you, you've got you've got to almost sculpt the light to some degree. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's hard because many a moon ago, I, I went to uni back in the day, and the lighting was never taught there at all, yeah. like at all, and uh, very much by myself. It was being on jobs with other either DPs or gaffers or or whatever who were doing bits and pieces, and I'd kind of watch and to try and learn on the job a little bit. Um, and very recently, I was with. Manchester Met Uni, their School of Design and um, Film students, giving them a masterclass on, on lighting, of just just little tr tricks and tips of what you know, um, real world scenarios and how you can light certain situations very easily, and you can apply different setups to lots of scenarios if you if you kind of know just some little basic ideas. And um, yeah, it was nice to see the guys getting hands on and do little bits and pieces. I'm I'm a little jealous. I'm a I'm a man Met graduate myself, and I'm. I wish, oh, yeah. I wish I'd had something like that when I was there. <laughs> well, that's um, it. It's like they, they all said that it's, it's, there's only so much you can kind of get taught out of a book. You know, yeah. you need to be hands on and actually doing this kind of kind of stuff. And it's very, I, I t completely agree with that. You know. Yeah, especially when you know you you can read about things like hard light, soft light. You know, all the different modifiers. You know how uh, a honeycomb or a snoot, you know, affects the lighting. But until you actually get hands on and, and use it, it's difficult to know exactly what you need and when. Yeah, um, absolutely. And it's, it's very, even the simpler things like, you know, even just applying bounce. Yeah. Shine and don't shine a light directly onto your talent. You use a wall that's around you just to, if you've got no kit with you, you know, just bounce a light up a wall just to give you a softer fill on something. And it's get, just, you know, get sort of implemented in those tips onto someone that might not have knew that that was even a thing to do that I, I remember when I never knew that when I was first starting out it's just a little very basic little grasp and then you know it's, you can apply that on bigger scales and you know it's it's all these little things that help yeah and it's all all those just tips tricks all these things you pick up um, again it just goes back to getting out there meeting people speaking to as many people as you can and, and, and getting hands on um, but on, so, on the lighting front um I believe you're also an ambassador for Light Panels. Yeah, um, Light Panels are a fantastic company. I do a lot of stuff with ITV News and uh, Good Morning Britain on location. And I have for many years used Light Panels, um, the one by ones, very similar to this Astro this time here, but would be out in the rain and s snow and whatever, and I'd have the one by ones of light in a, I don't know, a bridge or a shop that's been flooded or something in the back. And they'd be an absolutely battered by the wind and wind and that and you know they, they absolutely hold their own proper weather sealed and um yeah i i always used to post social stuff on on uh, insta and twitter and things like that and um the guys at light panels obviously um uh, linked up since some posts from there and we had a chat and um yeah just kind of I'm, it's, it's it's quite funny because i use their kit, their kit anyway and i absolutely love it so it kind of worked out nicely for them to be like, well, do you fancy doing some bits and pieces with us and work together on some um, little press pieces and whatnot? So yeah, it's good. They're, they're yeah. great, great panels. Yeah, and I've 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 seen some of your social posts and and you know the lights always look great. Um, it's it's you know high quality lighting and as we were saying earlier, knowing where and when to use it. You know, everything you post always looks incredible. So, I can't, no, I, I can't that. recommend. <laughs> I, I can't recommend you know um, enough that people sort of uh, learn from learn from you in in this space um, and go out yeah. And, and yeah. It's like even just the one by one LEDs. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to be a sales guy here at all, <laughs> but. For a long, long time, I, I, I regarded LED panels as just a hard, horrible, soft, you know, it just flood an area and, and whatnot. But especially with the one, the Astros like I use, they're very soft, very flattering light. Um, you can use it as a beauty light, not just for flooding a big area, for, you know, something you need to light. You can actually use them as a very nice, um, or, or, you know, if you want to do some skin tone stuff on a fashion commercial or things like that, they look, they hold up just as well as they would as, um, just a big ass fill light just to kick an area with a shed load of light so they, they i use them on pretty much every job to be honest yeah well, i mean that's it it's it's the versatility of them um not having to pack you know different lights for 
different conditions yeah. and then getting Absolutely. on location and realizing you packed the wrong thing it's a nightmare no. <laughs> <laughs> well that's it you can take you can take them on any job and the, no matter what they'll they'll fit in somehow i do a lot of stuff in the studio as well with you know it might be not quite so much the older tungsten lamps but t5s big 5k true daylight stuff and if i want a bit of extra fill in a corner i can just put up one of the one by ones with a softbox on and you know it's, it's equally as nice clean light and it marries in with that which is fantastic yeah so i mean the one of the main things we sort of wanted to talk about um obviously you know we're coming out the the, the tail end there of, of the pandemic um and we've seen we hope. pardon we hope <laughs> yeah yeah completely <laughs> fingers crossed um but we've seen so many changes you know in, in, in everything you know we're, we're doing this uh podcast um using you know, you know using skype um we've seen it in you know news reports people just sort of dialing in from different locations um but from from a sort of lighting cameraman um out on location sort of viewpoint how have you um seen it seen it change you know i believe you've been sort of on on the bleeding edge um right from the start if i'm right you were you were covering like one of the first covid stories we had in the uk yeah um when the i believe it was the first um lot of passengers coming back from china to arrow park hospital over liverpool way uh, we were covering it for good morning britain and itv news and back then we, di we didn't know how serious it was or anything like that we were just sent to this hospital to cover these uh, passengers that were coming back with this virus and you know we were just like yeah fine whatever and yeah. obviously we didn't go into it into any hospital we, we were two years down the line now we certainly didn't know the scale of what it was like um yeah, it was it was ridiculous back then that was the that was the first um yeah the first people that came back into the uk and i remember facebook memory came up the other day of it and um it's just like pfft, wow it kind of blew my mind a little bit it was like if we knew then what on earth was going to come off the back of that it was <laughs> you know, it was crazy i know again that was on a that was torrential rain that day it was absolutely soaking we had all the kit on the light tarp and stuff like that and it was proper fitting for the movie it was like a resident evil movie or something it was ridiculous <laughs> yeah it feels like a lifetime ago so yeah doesn't it yeah totally how then has it changed your sort of workflow whether that's on set or or you know in post how has it changed your sort of day-to-day -day, um workflow or, or how you go about production well very, very early on i remember when people really started freaking out work kind of slowed down a little bit i was still doing bits and pieces bits and pieces of the news obviously because there was a lot to cover with regards to that um but obviously in terms of like branded content and commercials and stuff like that that kind of all really slowed down because no one was able to or too scared to go out and shoot so i was doing a lot of remote editing so people would be filming their own stuff um and sending it on to me on drives it's like i do it a lot with the bbc orchestra and they were all filming themselves at home and then sending loads of rushes on some guy was doing like a crazy mix down of of the audio because they were recording it properly as well and then we were doing like i was doing I did, for example they did like a video for elton's 80th or however old he is now so i was doing they just send me all the rushes and I just edit them from at uh, home um, and kind of things like that was kind of weird because it was just rather than going into a, a space shooting it and then cutting it which we would normally do we just get sent sent random little rushes that people had filmed at home and it was that kind of happened quite quite a lot and that was kind of weird um, and then yeah a lot of live stuff I did a, used to do a lot of like um, big multicam concerts things like that obviously there was none of that so that completely dried out. So that one whole, imagine you've got three revenues of production that you do, that whole aspect was just kind of stripped away. Oh. And that was kind of like, wow, that's that's nuts. And I know a lot of companies that I used to work with in that realm have just, they don't even exist anymore. And it's just, because that's all they did, you know, all they did was live events, big concerts. And, uh, you know, I've got, I, I really feel for those guys because, you know, they had no work left at all. And they, yeah. uh, they they had to be had to become Amazon drivers or you know Tesco drivers or whatever like that. And uh, yeah, I really feel for those guys. But in terms of you know, the, it kind of got busier and busier. 
things kind of picked up a little bit. I, I was very lucky with doing stuff with the news because that was always ongoing as I was going through. I did a few bits and pieces. Um, I do a lot with Calrec Audio, good friends of mine. They, they've been quite busy throughout this developing new software and consoles and whatnot. So we've been shooting bits and pieces with those, developing um, new production films to launch for, for their distributors and things like that. So that's been kind of busy. I've kind of had core clients that have been busy busy throughout. And then it seems now it's the floodgates have opened because everyone's been itching to you know, get everything done, but they haven't been able to. And now it's just this backlog of production has just kind of gone yeah. boom. And everyone that I know is in the everyone that freelances is in the same boat. It's just it's nuts because obviously at the moment any branded co content or commercials, everyone wants the big Christmas sell, so it has to be out now before yeah. it's too late. And it's you know you'll end up shooting. So I was on a shoot the other week in a studio, and um, still shooting it. They wanted the edit for the following Monday, and they were like, right, we're shooting the next batch of this next week. What days are you free for that? And it's just like <laughs> not even started the edit yet, and you, you know you're wanting to. It's, it's crazy, That's um, but it, you know it's great. It's great to see. It's great to see that the pr production is well and truly back on, um, and even even stuff with like uh, I've done some stuff for four in a bed recently. We were traveling. We went to Ireland. You know, being, being able to get back on flights and stuff to for work has it's, it's been quite nice. Yeah, I definitely I, miss that. I, th I think, like you said, it's it's two years of production that's all of a sudden just been thrown yeah. out there. Um, so you know, it, it's for for all the all the the trouble there's been, you know, there's almost never been a better time to sort of be starting to try and pick up work than there is now at the moment. Yeah, that's probably a very valid point. Yeah, 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 big time. And and one of the things I've noticed, I, I don't know about yourself, I mean, crew sizes have been shrinking for you know years we're always trying to or we're always being told to try and get the most out of what we can with as few people and as little kit as possible um and, and it just seems to have been you know accelerated over over the pandemic but uh, if if i was going to put it this way if you had to go on a set you know you're taking an absolute skeleton kit you know whether it's just a one-man band operation or you know you might have one or two people what is your your go-to skeleton kit for basically any job well it's funny you say that actually quite a lot of time do have to do like a little a skeleton crew or like for example i did two weeks in scotland not so long back for, for good morning britain and that's basically my, i traveled up by myself uh for two weeks and then the, the reporters there and they just meet me every day to do whatever. So I've, I've got to go with just a, a kit, you know, and that's it. So basically my my run and gun day-to-day -day kit is my Sony FS7. I've got a Fujinon uh, 1855 MK, um, set of radio mics, my one by one Astras, which are two in a bag with the soft boxes. Um, big chunky set of Anton Bauer V-Locks, which will last all day. And that would probably be my, my ultimately stripped down kit. Just and I've got I'll have a shotgun mic in my camera bag just for safety if I need it. Um, but that's like the ultimate stripped down kit. One cam, set of lights, radio mics, um, and a heavy duty Satchler eighteen tripod that just will withstand some torrential yeah. storms. <laughs> <laughs> I, I and, think... oh, and a flask of tea, of course, a flask of oh. tea. Yeah, you can't you can't go without a brew, can you? <laughs> I think I think it's always good to point out and, and speak to people like yourself um, and show that you know you can go out with a skeleton kit and still get the results you're looking for. Um, there's always, and, and you know, coming from um, from a reseller, you know, we, we we obviously you know make our money by selling equipment, but there can almost be a fascination with having too much gear at one point people are always trying to you know, add to it they need the latest but it's always good to point out that you know if you've got the necessities you've got some good lights you've got some good mics a camera and a good lens you're pretty well set yeah yeah 100 percent. if you especially it's a lot of the time what i've found is you might it might be the kit that you're most comfortable with you know you could go on a, a job where you're not using your own kit which happens a lot and it might be, you know, a really elaborate kit with loads of other 
bells and whistles and whatnot that you don't need and you might not be the, as comfortable with that whereas you could just have taken your camera a set of sticks a couple of lights and um, yeah it, you would have got the job done a lot quicker and it would look exactly the same or better with your own kit simply because you're more comfortable with using that um, yeah so yeah it definitely you, you can have as little or as much kit as you want if it's what you can apply it to what is you know your 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 craft really yeah and and that's uh, um you know being comfortable with the kit and and just getting to know it just developing your skill set um you know we're we're always seeing you know more and more higher resolution cameras but they're not going to make you uh you know a better cinematographer you know you still need to learn you know how to light a scene you know how to how to set up your camera and how to shoot um so it's you know i i'll never recommend enough people getting out there with their kit and just shooting you know, yeah that's absolutely the... i think people kind of forget to do that um that they or, or that you can do that just or, or why why not why not do that just go out and you know just film bits and pieces if you or even if you're thinking about getting some new kit you know go down to a reseller like yourself and ask if you could you know have a little play and i'm sure they'll probably happy to you know help you help you out there a little bit i know you guys are great at that, that kind of thing yeah. um it's just it's all part of the you know why not have a play with it before you you end up buying something that might not be right for yourself yeah totally and and you know you don't always have to be shooting a, a short film or, or something like that you know uh shoot stock footage you know go out, go out and just you know get hands on um there doesn't always have to be um this sort of overarching purpose behind it um you know we, we got into this industry because we like you know making images um and like you said that, that can you know be forgotten about sometimes yeah absolutely 100 percent, and it is forgotten about i think yeah yeah it's, it's, you know the, the same thing with you know people forgetting you know that lighting is so important the audio is so important there there is that sort of the craft to uh, it's it's good to just get out and, and shoot and with that in mind before we sort of wrap up again really appreciate your time with us um but are there any sort of tips tricks whether it's you know lighting or audio or anything like that that you want to share with any of the the listeners or the viewers you throw you throw me on the spot there <laughs> <laughs> sorry I mean, that's, a, that's a that's a broad spectrum of stuff there I'm, um I don't know. I think in terms of like lighting, it's, you could you could almost say sometimes less is more. You don't need everything to smash an area with. Play with bounce. Bounce is amazing. Bounce stuff off walls, ceilings in small. Certainly in smaller spaces. Don't try and hit your talent or whatever you, your product is with as much light as possible. Um, for example, look look at yourself there. Play with color. Color's a great way. Very simple way to you know give yourself um, a little bit of interesting shots. Uh, hiding lights and interiors and stuff is, is is very cool, um, and I think yeah, in, in if you if you're stuck in terms of lighting, just ask. You know, there'll be a, a thousand people you can probably ask on forums or whatever, or or just whip it into. You know, I don't want to say put it into Google and give <laughs> give you the, all the answers, but um, you know, learn, learn by doing. It's, it's it's a great way. You know, if you if you kind of figuring out buy online how to do something give it a go rather than ending up on set on a job not quite understanding how to do it if you if you, if you arrive a little bit prepared with already previous seven ago how to do something and, and having some fun with it then it's, it's going to be a lot nicer for you to, to be able to do that and it's you know it's all about fun at the end of the day isn't it yeah and in, ter in terms of audio i don't know that's that's a really broad one yeah, um, yeah it's... <laughs> it, it, it's, it, it was it was an open-ended question you know feel free to share what you want um I guess, yeah. I guess like a lot of people I, I i don't have an issue with it but a lot of people will say top mic will do on a camera and just rather than going down that route try and you know go a little bit further with it increase the quality of your sound and it'll increase your production tenfold yeah rather than something that's with a mic that's so far away um you know I know you've got a top mic on your uh, GH5 down there, so I'll, I'll do it. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
so you know we we started this this podcast basically talking about exactly that setup um and i'm, I'm glad i brought it I in know. today <laughs> it makes it makes well, such that, a difference yeah it it's, it does you, a bit of nice audio on um, an interview or something it, it just takes it up that extra notch you know it's, it's great yeah totally and and the last thing i'll pick up on there was you said don't be afraid to ask questions i think that's you know huge for people um just you know never be afraid to to try and learn more yeah massively if you especially with if you you know you're, you're assisting on jobs with with someone and you know just go and ask what what, what they're doing and why why you're doing that or what you know how how is that helping this, the scenario that's that's kind of what i've done in the past ten, however many years 10 years or whatever it is and uh, you just kind of learn it every day is a learning day you know i'm still learning on jobs now and i think if if you carry on with that ethos then it, it's great because you're never going to get dated in in your practice and um, yeah, people people appreciate it because they'll they, you know, we're all nerds in this industry. They kind of appreciate passing on a bit of knowledge and, and whatnot. So, you know, and a, 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 me and my me and a colleague of mine always say, you don't ask, you don't get, and just yeah. you know, massively um, incorporate that into your day, and <laughs> you know, just try and learn and have fun. I guess that's the totally rule. Eight. Awesome. Well, thank you again so much for your time ed really appreciate it um if you know i i know you're a busy man you know like you said the run up to christmas is going to be swamped for you um but if people want to you know reach out to you or find you where do they find you sure um feel free to hit me up on instagram it's at ed flag time um or twitter is at flag time films uh, but I'd, I'd probably use Insta more than Twitter. I've not. I don't really tweet very much anymore. Or, or LinkedIn. I'd list it on LinkedIn. Um, again, I don't post on there much. But feel free to connect. And if you've got any questions of, about kit or light panels, or, or you know, if you can't, you want to figure out how to do something setup wise, just give, give us a shout, man. I'll, I'll always, you know, I'm not too busy for anyone to to uh, give us a give us a shout. That's awesome. Again, thanks, Ed. Um, best of luck with the with the mountain of work you've got to do um, and yeah have a great week everyone I hope that's been insightful definitely mm -hmm.